Hi everyone, Dr. Bloxham again from Feller and Bloxham Medical. I uh, just finished up surgery for the week and I thought it would be a perfect time to do another one of these kind of narration walkthrough result videos. So make sure your volume is turned up. I'm gonna present a patient uh, and actually narrate and kind of walk you guys through the case. So let's jump right in. So this patient is one of our classic younger guys. Uh, he's in that, that transition period between college and grad school or his career. And as you can see by these pictures here, he came in with some pretty classic thinning, really thinning throughout the frontal region into the middle. You can see how his hair is very wispy, very light in color in that front in the middle. Um, but the back part of the middle and the crown still looked okay. So what we decided we were gonna do is go in and basically rebuild everything that he was missing. Um, and you can see here are the surgical lines for the day. We decided we'd go in and do about a 2800 graft FUT procedure. And something I want to note about these lines is they're a little bolder than I, I typically go with these young patients. I, I usually, for those who have seen other videos know, um, I like to go very conservative with these young guys because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So I typically make the lines a little bit higher, a little more recessed. Um, but those who watch my other videos will also know that I'm a big proponent of customizing hairlines. Hairlines are not a one size fits all kind of deal. And this patient reported to me, and I also saw old photographs of him, he's always had a kind of a low, broad, flat hairline with some recession in the corners. And after toying around with it a little bit, we decided that's what was best for him. And we let him know that because we were going a little bit bolder and, and more aggressive than we usually do, and not to an appropriate point, but more than we usually do, you know, he may want to do little tweaks in the front here and there in the future. And here are his pictures, did his procedure, like I said, 2800 graft FUT, went very well. You can see the post-op here. The next pictures I'm gonna show, uh, this is the patient at 10 days after his surgery, and he took the liberty of actually shaving his own head. This is when we were seen him for staple removal. And the reason I'm showing these, because I think they just look great. Uh, I always tell patients that you can go back to work, school, normal life when the staples are removed. Um, you get a haircut like this, the worst case scenario is you maybe use a little bit of topic sparingly to kind of even everything out, but no one's gonna give you an odd look if you walked into the office with this. And you can even see his incision line in these pictures. And the, the little redness and the little scabbing, that's all stuff he needs to wash off so that'll go away. But as you can envision, a little bit of topic here and there and he's good to go. So I saw this patient back in at 12 months. Uh, he came in at 12 months, showed us and reported that everything from the, the previous transplant grew in well, but he told us he was really starting to see thinning in the further back regions, the posterior regions of this middle scalp and the kind of anterior, the more forward regions of this crown area in the back. And that's not surprising. You know, as a young guy, hair loss is progressive and it tends to kind of move from front to back. And what I told him was, thankfully we started you off as a big FUT, uh, you have lots of good donor to keep going. This was something we anticipated, so let's do another one. So we went in and planned to do another big FUT, around 2,500 grafts or so, not only to fill this region up here, um, but I also was gonna kind of sneakily take a couple hundred singles and just do a little bit of hairline refinement. And the next set of pictures I'm gonna show here are, are pictures of his donor the day of surgery. Now, what you'll see here is a purple line and a shaved area below it. Underneath the purple line is, is his scar from the first surgery. And as you can tell, you know, the scar is great. It can be hidden with a little purple marker line. But what I really want to show here is all this good untouched tissue below the line. We're actually going to go below his line to harvest here. And again, it's really no surprise that I'm a big proponent of the gold standard follicular unit strip surgery, the FUT surgery. And this is why. Young guy, um, we were not sure what his future was going to hold. We already did 2,800 grafts. Now we're going to go in and do another 2,500 grafts. The reason we can keep going like this, and he'll have more to, to do in the future if he loses here or wants to thicken here, is because we started with strip. If you're a young guy with an uncertain amount of hair loss and a finite amount of donor, which we all have, start with FUT. Start with strip. Trust me. Okay. So the next set of images here uh, is him after surgery. So you can see in these first ones, I uh, went in and, and what you're seeing here is the strategic beef up in the hairline, a couple hundred singles. I did this without shaving, not something I usually do. I only did it because I was working in my own prior transplants. And um, you can also see the top. You know, big, big surgery really knocked it out on the top there. 
So I next saw this patient in eight months after his second surgery, came in very happy, um, and I'm gonna show two sets of photos on him here and then some video. Now the first set of photos I'm showing, uh, which I'll get into now, this is just how the patient came in off the street. And what he told me is that he usually wears a little bit of topic just in the very back of his hair, a little concealer powder, just in the region we didn't work, but he didn't put anything in his hair that day at all. And the reason I'm showing these first set of images here uh, just to really show the sheer volume from what we got from the transplants. This is you know, a little over 5,000 transplants now from front to back, and just look at that big poof. Just, just thick, rich, natural hair. You can even see some color differences between the transplants and his weaker hair in the back. And the next set of images I'm gonna show here are uh, my favorite, the wet, slicked, you know, really showing off the hairline here. So in these pictures here, you can get a sense of, of really kind of how it looks. And this obviously isn't how he walks around every day, but this is just, you know, harsh, Really, really trying to give you a good idea of what you're looking at here. And now I'm gonna show some video. And same thing, this first video here is just showing off the sheer volume. This is just him off the street, nothing in his hair. Look at that nice big poof. And I'm actually in a second here gonna zoom in and stop it so you can see uh, before any surgery, his hair now, and when it was weak, uh, uh, eight months prior, we went into the second one. Just look at that volume. That's You can't get that with anything besides transplants. And now we'll jump right into the second video where again, I'm really showing off. I'm trying to, to show the hairline. And um, what I do here is what I do in all my videos. This guy's wet, slicked back. Um, this is harsh. This is about as bad as you can make a transplant look. And I do this to, because there's just, this is the most honest way you can, can display a transplant. There's no way to fake it when you've got the hair wet, slicked back, and you've got a camera in the guy's face. And I like doing this because I tell patients, if you're happy with this, you know, this is the most honest, way you can display a transplant. If you'd be happy with this, I think you're a good candidate for surgery. If this isn't something you'd be happy with, maybe transplants are not for you. But I show these not so much to showcase, look how beautiful the work is, but to just show, you know, this is what you can get with a transplant. And then the very last thing here I'll show is just some before and afters. We'll just click through these really quickly here. Just showing him uh, the befores were taken the morning of his first surgery and the afters were eight months after his second surgery, so about 60% maturation. Still has a lot of room to go. So when I spoke with this patient uh, eight months after his second surgery, he told me that you know he's very happy, um, has a little teeny spot in the back, that spot I said he sometimes puts powder into, uh, that he may want to do in the future. He also thinks he, he wants to actually thicken up that frontal band and you know really get that, that perfect density in the front. Uh, thankfully, he has lots of donor left to keep going. You know, we set him up in a good situation. He's going to be basically transplants totally front to back, but he'll have good density, exactly what you saw in the video. Nothing fake about that. You just, that is what it is. Um, so again, hope you enjoy the video presentation. Um, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, and we will see you in the next one.